Hey there, today we are checking out the LG E7 series 4K HDR OLED TV. This TV does everything and there's no better picture quality available anywhere else. Let's check it out. The diagram on top of this box may make the unboxing look complicated, but it really isn't. Basically, the idea is to take the lid of the box, insert some of the foam pieces, and use it as a support structure when you put on the stand or wall mount bracket. Here's everything that comes in the box, and I really appreciated how LG packaged everything but the stand in a single accessory box so it's all easy to find. This is pretty standard stuff here with breakout cables for older connections and batteries for the remote. Note that just like most TVs, HDMI cables aren't included so be sure to pick some up if you're gonna need them installing this metallic stand is actually a piece of cake you just slot it into the bottom and then you've got four screws to secure it in place once that's done you want to take this decorative piece and snap it into place to cover up the screws here's the back of the e7 OLED and the reason it looks like a mirror is because the OLED panel is mounted to a solid sheet of glass more on that in a second down the left hand corner, you'll find that the power cord has already been hardwired, so you just need to plug the TV into your wall. Down the right hand corner, you'll find all of your connections, and they're split up between two spots, one this side bay and the other right in the back of the TV. In total, there are four HDMI inputs, one with ARC for easy connection to a soundbar, and the E7 comes with three USB inputs for connecting a solid state drive or anything that you might have media loaded on. Then you've got your standard digital optical output, ethernet connection, and a place for those breakout cables to connect an older device. Here's a profile shot of the TV, and if you're having trouble seeing it, that's because it's incredibly thin. The top portion is about as thick as an iPhone, and down below, it bumps out just about 2.4 inches where the hardware and inputs are, so whether you're stand mounting or wall mounting, it's going to look incredible. As we take a look at the front of the TV, we can hone in on the two elements that make the E7 different than the rest of LG's OLED lineup. It starts with that piece of glass I mentioned earlier, which from the front looks like a see-through bezel right around the black screen. The second element is this grill down at the bottom, which actually hides a series of speakers. Think of it as like a built-in soundbar, and that's gonna allow the TV to have much clearer sound, much bigger sound, better stereo separation, and even pull off some virtual surround sound. The footprint on the stand below that sound bar is actually pretty small. I've measured about 24 and a quarter inches wide where it actually touches the stand and about eight inches deep. The first time you power on the TV, LG's WebOS smart TV system is gonna take you through a setup wizard. It's animated and bubbly, but it does help you get your cable box or live TV antenna set up straight away. Then it moves on to Wi-Fi, and with that done, you can go to labeling your inputs. Here we have a Blu-ray player connected to HDMI 2. So we'll go into this input setting, click all inputs, edit the icon for HDMI 2, and now it's labeled as a Blu-ray player, so we don't have to guess what's plugged into that port. All of that setup is made quite a bit easier using LG's Magic Motion remote. It does work as a conventional remote control with up, down, left, right, and enter keys, but it's also a Wii-style remote, so the motion that you make with the remote operates a cursor on the screen, and that makes entering things like your usernames and passwords so much easier. That's it for our unboxing and quick setup of the LG E7 OLED TV. For more information like picture quality, picture settings, and what it's like to use the television, be sure to check out our full review.